Hello there. I wonder if you've ever had the experience where somebody requests something from you, maybe they want your time, your energy, maybe even money, and you open your mouth to say no, and yes comes out. And you can hear yourself saying yes, but you really, it's not what you want to do. So how can we get better at saying no? Well, actually, I'm making two videos on this subject. I'm going to make this first one. This first video is about looking at the bigger picture of saying no. And in the next video, I'm going to give you some practical tips on saying no. It's important that we look at the bigger picture, first of all, because we can put these little tips and techniques into, you know, we can try and apply them. But if we're not actually coming from the right kind of perspective, it makes it very difficult for us to, to actually help make those work. So we're going to start off today in this video and looking at the, the kind of the, the bigger picture. If you've been following me, you've read my books or you, you know about my work, you'll know that there's one thing that I often talk about. And that's the difference between conscious kindness and misguided kindness. And when we can understand that, it really does help us be much better at saying no. It makes it much easier for us. So what do I mean by conscious kindness and misguided kindness? Well, let's take misguided kindness first. Misguided kindness is when we kind of just, you know, we don't want to rock the boat. We, we just want to smooth everything over and make life easy for now in this moment even though actually we know that in the long run, we're not really helping ourselves or the other person. It's easier for us right now just say, oh yes, okay, I'll do that for you. Because we don't want to feel those emotions of guilt and you know, feel, don't want to reject somebody or we don't want to cause a, a, a difficult feeling between us. So we just say, oh yes, yes, okay, I'll, I'll do that for you. And that's a kind of misguided kindness because it doesn't really help in the long run. You know, we're here as human beings to learn and grow and evolve. And that quite often can mean having little challenges so that we can grow through those challenges, having to kind of step out of our comfort zone. And if we don't do that, then we don't grow. So it's a kind of a misguided kindness to always give in or always say yes to somebody because you're not helping yourself. And you're not actually setting any boundaries for them to have to go and maybe help themselves as well. So that's misguided kindness. And then conscious kindness, of course, is looking at that bigger picture. It's understanding that we're here to learn, to, to grow and to evolve. And that, you know, it's okay to step out of our comfort zone sometimes. And maybe things will feel a bit uncomfortable, ruffled feathers, as I always say, uh, for a little while. But then in the long run, the relationship will be so much better because it will be more authentic, more real. You won't be carrying resentment or, you know, wishing you hadn't said yes. And the other person then may also have to grow by going and finding ways to help themselves rather than you just sort of giving everything to them. When we can think in terms of I'm helping this other person grow and I'm helping myself grow by being more consciously kind. And that means sometimes setting a boundary and saying no. It makes it much easier for us to say no because we kind of know in our heart that we're still doing a good thing. So, okay, so there we are. We've got the, uh, the idea of conscious kindness, misguided kindness. We, we're kind of thinking along that bigger picture perspective. We want to say no. And what's a big thing that gets in the way? emotions our emotions can get in the way and very often saying no brings up the emotion of guilt or perhaps anxiety a bit of fear a bit of worry about kind of rocking the boat so what can we do as i said you know if we want to put the tools and techniques and all the tips that i'm going to give you in the next video if we want to put them into practice it's quite difficult to do that if we're you know our heart is pounding or our stomach's churning or feeling all tensed up and worried about our saying our no. So what we really need to do then is to actually work on those emotions. How can we deal with those emotions that come up? One thing that I often teach my clients and I use myself in my own life in various situations is EFT, 
emotional freedom techniques. And I will give you a link below the video to another video that very briefly tells you about EFT. If you want to know more about that, then definitely do get in touch with me. It's one of the things that I, I incorporate as part of my toolbox of helping clients. Once we've got our emotions under control, we're, we're kind of managing our, our emotions, then we feel calmer. We have what's called a cognitive shift. That basically just means that we're, we've changed our perspective in the way we're thinking about something. We're perhaps not worrying so much about what if, what if I say no. And we're actually looking at the bigger picture and we feel calmer and more able to communicate. You know, when your emotions get the better of you, your voice gets all sort of high and, you know, you can't kind of say what you want to say in a, in a, a way that's, really heard by other people. So that's why managing your emotions is so, so important. Where do those emotions come from? Usually that comes from, well, it starts, it starts in childhood and then it kind of repeats itself throughout our life. But it, it, it usually it starts in childhood. That's the first time that we have these emotions. If you think about the last time you felt anxious, for example, that wasn't the first time. That was just a replay of many times that you felt anxious before and a replay of the first time when you were a child. And the same with guilt and all the other emotions, joy, anger, positive, negative. So it's that little child within you that is feeling those emotions that come up when you want to say no, and you, you just kind of can't. So it's the little child that actually needs to be soothed in order to help you to feel more grown up, more adult and calm so that you can say no, because then the little child isn't running the show anymore. The grown up you is. So one way to get better at saying no and to set yourself up and prepare yourself for the tools and the tips I'm going to give you in the next video is to actually get very good at soothing that inner child and to talk to yourself, talk to that inner child. As I've said in other videos, you know, if you had a nickname when you were a child, address yourself from that nickname. And if you didn't have a nickname, just call yourself little and then your name. It's a very quick way of getting into the subconscious and connecting with that inner child and say to them, it's okay to say no, it's fine. I'm living in the grown up world. Maybe as a child, it wasn't okay to say no. For most of us, that's the case. Busy parents, cross parents, parents who are distracted. They may have given us the impression that we weren't allowed to say no. They may have said no because it was something dangerous, but as children, we do learn that it's not okay to say no. As grown-ups, it very often is okay to say no. And in fact, it's detrimental to us as grown-ups if we don't say no. It worked as a child, doesn't work now. So by soothing that inner child, you're just allowing them to understand that they can go off and play in your subconscious. They can be free. They can have fun. They don't have to be worrying about stuff because you're in a grown-up body now, living a grown-up life with other grown-ups around you. And if we could all learn to be better at that, life would be a lot better. So soothe your inner child. Tell them that it's okay. And remind them that it's, it's all right to say no because you're living a different life now. When you do that, and then you go to put these tips into practice, your find is so much easier. So think about the things that I've said in this video. What's the difference between misguided kindness and conscious kindness? What are the emotions that come up for you when you think about saying that? And what techniques can you use to calm yourself? EFT, as I've said, is a brilliant technique. And then think about that inner child who's feeling those emotions and how you can soothe them. In the next video, I'm going to give you some practical things. Now that you've been thinking about these bigger picture things, I'm going to give you some practical things that you can do to make it easier 
to get into a practice and a habit of saying no, because it is a habit, it is practice. It's not just something you do once, it's an ongoing practice in life. So if you've liked this video, please do hit the thumbs up, like button. That way more people will see the video and you'll be helping me to help them. Do hit the subscribe button so you know when more videos are coming out. And I'd love to hear your comments. So please do leave your comments in the, in the comments below. And I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you in the next video.